This is Heidi Hardy, and welcome to another episode of DFW Spotlight on Business. I have uh, another fabulous guest in the studio, Brian Bingham. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I'll just say Brian and I met recently. It hasn't really been that long, but we had this fantastic conversation about his business. And um, Brian is a partner agent for Alliance Insurance Services. Right. Correct? And so we're going to get to know Brian and uh, all that he does. I love this topic because I think it, as we're going into the new year and a new month, really, mm -hmm. um, we, we have to start at least from my perspective, and I know I'm talking to other business owners who are saying, "Yeah, 2018, I'm I'm still I'm still hammering out the details, of the budget, or right. um, or goals." So Brian's here. Uh, the topic of the show is called risky business, and uh, you know, have you assessed your risk in your business for 2018? So we're going to go through that today. Okay. Good. And I don't want to bore people, but I do want to make sure that I introduce myself. Uh, some people um, uh, may be new to, to the show or, or to, to me, and uh, my name is Heidi Hardy, um, and I have been in new business development and business ownership. I've been doing um, many, many things for, for over 18 years, and uh, it's, it's taken me on a really fun journey to getting to know business owners like yourself, Brian. So... My goal with DFW Spotlight on Business is to really, from a local standpoint, uh, highlight, spotlight, um, if you will, uh, these businesses in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Benbrook and Hearst and Bedford and Frisco and all the, the, the towns that are in DFW, um, give them the opportunity to talk about their business, what's going on, not just globally, because we get to hear that all the time, um, but but locally, what's happening locally. And um, so it's been my pleasure to have bit local business owners on with me to share their expertise, to talk about business, and just to make sure that um, as we go throughout our days, we, uh, we get the information we need. And um, so today I, I'm excited about this topic because I think it's it's relevant and I really think a lot of people can, can benefit from it. Uh, some of the other sort of housekeeping uh, things that I do. Um, so we are sponsored by uh, Real Life Media and Real Life Media is a podcast and a live stream shows like this producer. I want to encourage you to go to www.reallifemedia.com um, and just check out our website. It, uh, there are so many businesses out there that have a voice, and it, and I couldn't feel more strongly that if you have a voice and you have expertise and um, you want to stand out from uh, your competition, a podcast or a show like this can really separate you and differentiate you and give you uh, an opportunity to to have people hear you uh, and, and your message. So Real Life Media is our sponsor, one of our sponsors. And then uh, Insperity is uh, another sponsor. Um, Insperity is a PEO, a professional employment organization. We had a whole show on that. So if uh, if you didn't catch that and you want to, uh, it, I encourage you to go to YouTube and, and check it out or to uh, reallifemediallc.com. But um, Insperity, your business can run better, grow faster, and make more money with Insperity. And, and what I'm going to say, Brian, and, and start bringing you in is when you're a business owner, you really have to know when it's time to outsource some of the things that you might have started doing on your own. HR is one of those things. Mm -hmm. So um, I've had the privilege of talking to many companies since I started with Insperity, and some of them are ready for that transition and, and to give give that up. And some of them are, aren't. <clears throat> um, they're not ready. But the, the good news is that there's companies like Insperity who can help. And so um, thank you to Insperity. You're going to see the biz moments. Uh, that's our commercial breaks, and, and they're great. They do a great job of producing those. So uh, we are excited about that. Uh, and um, 
let's see, is there anything else? Well, yes, uh, follow us on Facebook as DFW Spotlight on Business. You can uh, connect with us there and like us. I, I um, you know, I don't know. It's a it's a social media thing, but it's kind of fun to watch. You know, people getting on your social media page and mm -hmm. appreciating mm -hmm. uh, what you're sharing. So like us, and then uh, Twitter is a uh, uh, Heidi underscore Hardy. And um, we were talking before the show. The Twitter sphere exploded uh, because Matt Lauer was fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, employment practices liability is one of the things that I have to deal with. And mm -hmm. years ago, it was nobody really cared much about it. And that's changed. That changed over the years, over the last 10 years or so. Now more companies have employment practices liability and protect themselves from that kind of thing. Right. And it's in the last month, it's really blown up, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. I, I had a conversation last night with a business owner and, um, you know, she had a really unique uh, perspective on it. She said, you know, what? hopefully what's happening is going to make change where everybody does feel safe. Women, oh, it's changed for the better. For the better. Uh, but but it does feel like, in you know, an incredible shaking of, of, of what we know as normalcy. And so... Um, so uh, I bring that up because it does have something to do with what we're going to talk about it does. today. It does, and, absolutely. And it has to do with Insperity. Uh, you know, Insperity is an HR outsourcing company that if if there is any doubt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that there might be something happening in your company and you you may not be qualified to handle that, talking to a company like Insperity or, or, or hiring a company like Insperity could make all the difference. And I'm sure the heartbreak wasn't just about um, what happened. Obviously, that was a heartbreak, and we don't know. They, they haven't really announced what happened um, with Matt Lauer. But, you know, 20 years of talent, 20 years of this person really being the face of, of this organization and having to let him go. And so, um, you know, if you, if you look at it from a small business standpoint, it, if that's happening, pay He attention. does need to be let go. Yeah, absolutely. But pay attention and start, you know, getting the yeah. experts like yourself yeah. and and myself with Insperity so that you can jump in front of that and and it's no longer uh, okay to ignore. I guess right. is what I'm right. trying to get right. to. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that was an interesting little tidbit this morning. Um, you know, one of the things that we do uh, at the beginning of the show because I, I I think it helps uh, sort of get us in in the mood mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk about what 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 we're uh, what the what we're trying to convey is we I go through and I look at Forbes or or Harvard Business Review and I look at you know what's going on in business that pertains to our topic which is risk business risk right. um, you can call it some of it we'll talk about insurance for sure but we'll talk about consulting and 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 reasons why you would want to bring consultants in. So um, I went to, um, this is www.propertycasually360.com. And they had, this was great because it was four emerging risks. Um, it was, and it said in 2017. So some, some of these articles can be a little bit um, outdated. This one wasn't. And I was, I was really uh, curious to share this with you and sort mm -hmm. of get your mm -hmm. professional take on it. Mm -hmm. Um, the number one um, that they listed was cyber risk, and mm -hmm. so I'm I'm curious from your perspective how how important is that, and what's going on? And well, we were just talking about employment practices sure. stuff. So ten years ago, it wasn't a big deal; nobody really wanted it, and now everybody has it. In the last two or three years, the cyber liability and the data breach issue has yes. come up a lot more. Yes. Now it's becoming more the norm, and it's going to be. You know, with, with Equifax and Home Depot and Target and yes. all the companies that were breached, the smaller mid-sized business has the same issue. They do. They really do. And and um, so cyber risk is, is real. I think um, I think some businesses probably say, eh, you know, I'm, I'm not big. I'm, I'm not Target, so uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, it. But if you're using IT and, and you're storing information um, – I have a, a, a colleague and, and a friend who uh, builds websites, mm -hmm. and he said he's amazed at how many businesses, you know, that are in the five million, you know, they're mm -hmm. they're growing, they're a growing business, have the same website that they've always had, and and they don't have a, a secure back end, you know, they're not securing that website for people to when they uh, buy things off of the website. So little things like that are risky. Mm -hmm. business practices. Mm -hmm. So cyber um, security is a, is a big deal. 
it's huge and it's huge for most every business. And, you know, I have clients that will tell me, Brian, we just swipe credit cards. We don't house the data. They're still responsible. For Absolutely. That data. Absolutely. That's so interesting. Well, let's go to number two, because I, um, I thought this was equally relevant. It's reputational damage. Yeah. So um, it's a risk. What do you think about it? Well, I, I think that you have to control, you know, everything that you do can hurt your reputation. Yep. So if somebody harasses somebody else in the workplace, it's going to hurt your reputation. Uh, I work with a lot of nonprofit organizations, so it's even more apparent there. When there's one little slip up, it can be huge on whether somebody gives their money to that organization or not. Yes. Uh, the reputation is, is your business. That is your business. It's your brand. It's your brand. That brings in safety. That brings in cyber liability. That brings in everything. It does. It does. And I, I appreciate that thought. Um, the, I thought this was interesting. I'm going to read a little bit about what they meant by this. Um, okay. Supply chain interruption. A growth of the global economy has resulted in more outsourcing and dependence on foreign manufacturing and products. Less apparent in that link, lengthier supply chains have multiplied exposure to wide spectrum of events. So this is a risk if you are somebody who's, you know, outsourcing or, or buying from China or, or overseas, then and you're depending on delivering those products, there's an interruption and that's a risk. Right, right. It, it is, and, and something happens to your supply chain, and it, it you don't get that product anymore. you got to have a way to do that, and a contingency plan is what every business has to have, so they got to be ready for that to happen. Yeah, so I if they agree. can't get their product anymore, where are they going to get it? Exactly. Well, I, and, and I know that, you know, at the, um, the tsunami um, that happened years ago uh, disrupted a lot of supply for um, many people, and, right. and I remember – emails and letters coming from certain companies that were saying, you know, due to our, our, our supply, um, we were not able to deliver. Um, I don't know how much money they lost, but it, 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 I think it did teach some um, businesses, big businesses mostly, to, to, to like you said, have right, these right, contingency right. plans and, right. and, and make sure that they're not depending on just one right. source. Um, and this last one, I... You know, I, I was in insurance yeah. and like uh, like you, I, I owned an insurance agency and um, every time I sat down and talked to a business owner, this came up. It, it, it came up because it's always changing. There's always something about to happen. So um, legislative and regula regulatory change <clears throat> is a risk that p businesses need to pay attention to. Give me your thoughts on that. Well, sometimes you can't control that. You've got to be paying attention and you've got to have somebody, a consultant that's behind you that keeps up with that kind of thing and watches those. It depends on what type of business it is, sure. right? Sure. And whether you can control it or not control it. Sometimes you can't control it. Um, I can think of a good example right now, but, but if there's a regulatory action that happens and you can't sell your product anymore, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, and I think you have to plan for that. Absolutely, I would I would say that um, one of the the benefits of, of having a company like Insperity is Insperity. That's what they do. They they follow. They, they you know they're there right. in 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 right. Austin in at in DC and they're following these regulations um, because they take on the risk for their clients. So if it, it's something as easy and simple as um, um, Minimum wage, mm -hmm. you know that, that there's conversation about that right, right now. Right. There's conversation about employee benefits, the ACA, the Act, you know, and, and there's people for it and there's people against it. But the reality is, it affects business owners, and business owners have to pay attention to these risks right. and these right. potential um, interruptions. Right. Well, you know, those are the four: the cyber risk, the reputational damage, supply chain interruption, and legislative re regulatory change. Um, any, you know, I, I guess just wrapping this se segment up, any advice? Well, I recently talked to a group of nonprofit organizations and I did a top 10 list for them specifically. Uh, what are their top 10 risks? Because every business has a different top 10. Sure. You know, what's the most important thing that's, that they need to watch out for? For the nonprofits, it's directors and officers and protecting their directors and officers from personal lawsuit because of their actions as a director on the board. Right. 
So every business has their their different their different thing that that they have to pay attention to. Some it's property. So you have a warehouse that's full of stuff. You have we have to, a friend in we the have, studio. We do have a friend in the studio, <laughs> and it really likes Brian. <laughs> it does like me. I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, but uh, somebody that has a lot of property, that may be their top priority is to protect that property. Uh, liability issue. I mean, you have to consider everything. Right. So that top 10 can be different for any, every every company. Right. It's right. different. Top I, 10. I, I agree. And I think uh, and we'll talk more. In fact, we're, we're going to a break. Thank you for, mm -hmm. for your yeah. input and your Thank expertise. You. Um, we're going to go to our first break. Um, when we get back, we're going to get to know Brian. Great guy and, and business owner, and so his story is amazing. Um, also, we're going to start getting into the meat and potatoes of, of this show, and that is, you know, let's talk about what this risk looks like and what they can do about it. We're not trying to scare people, but at the end of the day, what we want is to – I guess, arm people with knowledge and resources. And so we're going to come back and give you more um, information and share a little bit more about Brian and, and his journey in his business. Uh, this is Heidi Hardy. You're watching DFW Spotlight on Business. And we'll be right back. Welcome to today's Biz Moment brought to you by Insperity, inspiring business performance. We present to you a boss's guide, the pros and cons of socializing with employees after work. Number one, it's a good one, it's a pro. You'll get to know your employees better, and that might mean discovering new ideas, skills, or interests that can help them contribute more fully during the work hours. It's not just hanging out, you're discovering things about each other. Number two, another pro, building stronger relationships. Maybe you share an obsession for Sharknado. Maybe you bond through a strong dislike of the Dallas Cowboys, boo. Whatever it is, building trust and friendship could grow overall employee engagement, not to mention enriching your life through added friendships. Number three, it's a con. Let's file it in the negative. There are potential liability issues, especially when there's alcohol involved. Lowered inhibition and lapses in judgment, you know, like dancing on a bar, are possibilities we'd like to file in the negative column. Number four, also another con. A relaxed environment outside of work might mean some of your employees try to take advantage of your participation. Whether they misread the relationship and see you as more of a buddy, it could blur the separation of business and friendship. You never know. But whatever it is you decide is best for you in each scenario, we hope you tune in for more Insperity Biz Moments, business tips for savvy leaders. For more like these, visit the Insperity blog at insperity.com. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a shorter um, insperity biz moment, but I, I just I, I love um, the biz moments that they that they share with us, and um, I think they're they're helpful um, in in so many ways. Running business is never never an easy thing. Speaking of, yeah, thank you, Brian Bingham, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. You have a a, a couple of, of uh, an, uh, an acronym at the end of your name. It's CIC. Mm -hmm. CIC. Tell us what that is. That's a certified insurance counselor. Okay. It's kind of like the CPA designation for the insurance industry, for the commercial insurance industry. Okay. Uh, it, it's a five course and a test after each one. I've had it for about 20 years. Uh, it's extremely valuable. I have to go back for continuing education every year. Yeah. Which helps me a lot in my business. Keep up with the regulations. Everything and, and, that's going on. Yeah, right. absolutely. And I, I would say the insurance industry does uh, tend to have regula just a few regulations. Oh, there's constantly <laughs> something that's changing. Like the big deal right now is drones. Okay, oh, so yeah, I, took, I had absolutely. a whole class on drones. What's the liability there? You know, was it awful? It was. It was interesting. Yeah, and and, and those classes are always scary to me because you go to those things and you hear all that stuff and you think, wow, what. You know, I got to protect myself from that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you got a lot of real estate agents and people that are using drones in their business. Yeah. And they may not be covered properly at all for that. So, well, I ask you that because my husband absolutely loves drones. And speaking of, um, happy anniversary, my love. Oh, it's today? Our yes, it's a Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm very, very um, just elated mm. with, with, with uh, our. Our relationship and love. He's he's my he's my hero. So, cool. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Um, but he loves drones and he has a drone. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, it's, it's personal use and um, I couldn't be more. <laughs> what are you doing? Why is that? Drone? Right. Uh, uh, so it's interesting. I, I think 
you know, I asked you, is it awful? <clears throat> I think that's probably one of the most interesting and the newest mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, pieces of risk out there. And so that's why it was kind of a... You have apps app. You have apps now on your phone oh. that you can tell where you can fly it and where you can't fly it. You have apps that you can buy insurance coverage for an hour or a year. I didn't know whatever. that. Yeah, to cover in case the drone falls. There's a mosquito again yeah. that slows me. Um, <laughs> that, that could fall and hurt somebody or something happened because of that drone use. You've got a specific insurance for it because your homeowners is not for that. So that that's interesting. And we are not. We won't go down that rabbit trail, yeah, 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 but, right, but, right. but I will tell you, if you need to know more about drones, um, call Brian. Yeah. Because Brian's company is called Alliance Insurance Services. You've been in business for... A little while. 29 years. I know. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's yeah, awesome. Right. Um, Thank you. And and you are located in Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, so give us a little, uh, are you from Arlington? Are you from this? Are you from Texas? Give yeah, us a little background I am, on, uh, on you. I was born about four miles from here. <laughs> really? Yeah, in downtown Dallas at Baylor. Okay. I uh, grew up in Grand Prairie. Okay. Uh, we moved, uh, my, I got married, uh, what year, 1994. And uh, we've got two kids. We live in Colleyville uh, by Grapevine. Sure. Now. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Two kids, one's 15, one's 21. Uh, when he's in college at A&M, and she's a high school sophomore at Grapevine. Um, pretty much right out, of, right out of college, I've been in the insurance business pretty close. I took over dad's agency. Okay. And uh, it was very, very small at the time. Gave up a very lucrative job to take it over. Uh, it wasn't worth much, but grew it into something. Merged with my existing partner now, Jim Lawrence. And uh, it's, it's, it's grown and done well since then. Wow. So you started uh, right out of college. You took over your dad's business. And, and this is what's interesting about that to me. I do have conversations with other insurance um, mm -hmm. Um, um, own business owners, and they, you know, their, their kids aren't ready to, to take on that responsibility. Um, they they're hoping it happens, but w was that something that you were expecting to happen? Was, no, no, okay. I didn't want that okay. with my kids at all. Okay. Now, my, my, my business partner Jim, both of his daughters work with us, and it's working out fantastic. Good. They're outstanding. Yes. Uh, my son wants to be in finance and in just completely different track. And I'm letting him do what he wants to do. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And my kids worked for me when I owned my agency. They mm -hmm. um, and they were hardworking, and you yeah, know, yeah. so it can work. Yeah, it you know, can. If you're a business owner it and can. you have family working for you, it can mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I definitely know how hard the business can be. Mm -hmm. uh, so for 29 years, you've been serving the DFW area, right? And commercial insurance is particularly interesting to me. So have you always? Pretty much. Focus uh, on commercial? Dad's, Dad's book of business was some homeowners and auto and personal insurance. And I, and I remember the specific time sitting at a breakfast table with one of his clients. And after he had passed away and I was going to take it over and I, it just kind of hit me. I can't do this. I can't. It, it's just more. It's just different dealing with somebody on their homeowners and cars. I wanted to deal with business. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little more complicated in my view, but a, but a personal lines agent is going to say it's more complicated, I guess. But I wanted to deal with businesses, and pretty much from the beginning, that's what we, that's what we started doing. And that's where um, Brian and I connected, because I, I think we both have a, an affinity for the small mm -hmm. to medium-sized business owners, and so helping them was an, a topic for us. For for I don't know, we we met for maybe an hour. Um, mm -hmm. We were able to sort of connect to that passion of right. of uh, helping those business owners. Right. Um, so. What is the, I guess, what would you say is the hardest thing about owning a business in DFW? About owning a business, I mean, employees can be your hardest thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's what you deal with, too, mm -hmm. with insperity. Mm -hmm. Dealing with employees is tough. You can uh, outsource that. You can. Insperity. <laughs> insperity. <It's laughs> uh, I think that's the hardest part. And, of course, you you know, sales is everything to any business almost. Absolutely. got to keep your sales up. but. For, for me, you know, my most difficult thing sometimes in my industry is dealing with people that look at insurance as a commodity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they'll go out and get three bids and they'll take the cheapest one and go with it and then wonder why they don't get a claim paid. And which getting three bids, there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. But you've got to make sure that it covers you properly. And you have somebody that works as your consultant more so than just an insurance agent and sell you insurance because there's a ton of ways to transfer risk besides insurance policies. 
Insurance mm-hmm. policies is just one way of doing it. There's tons of other stuff you can do to help control your cost of risk. Yeah. So what's the best thing about owning a business? Um, well, the best thing for me in my industry is getting to learn about all different types of businesses, everything from manufacturers to we write a lot of veterinary hospitals uh, to group homes to animal-related businesses. We do a lot of animal-related businesses, uh, do a lot of nonprofit businesses. But you walk through, every business is different. Yeah. And you can walk through 10 veterinary hospitals and they're all run different. Yeah, absolutely. And we have some that don't do well at all, got smart people behind the counter, and then you got some that do very, very well. And those, in my opinion, that do well are the ones that give the responsibility to somebody else, whether it's in Sparity or whether it's an insurance agent that helps them manage their risk, turns it over to them instead of micromanaging every little piece. Does that make sense? I would completely agree. And I, I, I we need to hang on to that thought because the, the, it is hard to give up. If, if you are, yeah, if you're is. a business owner yeah. and, and you are, and I, I am and, and I have been and um when it just feels safer to keep your arms and wrapped around everything and the control aspect of it. Um, but like you said, it isn't necessarily the smartest thing. So we're going to, we're going to jump into that. Uh, well, I can tell you from just my clients and what I see, <clears throat> the ones that release that, some of that control are the ones that do the best. And it just makes sense. I mean, the, and again, we had this conversation you know, at your office, it just makes sense because as they grow, it, it, they just don't have, there's not enough cycles. You just don't have enough time. You don't right. have enough emotion right. and energy. Right. Um, so that was my next question for you is I know Allied Insurance Services isn't just an insurance agency. You guys do consulting. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, let's take a little bit of time and, and talk. let's talk about that piece of your business and why you didn't. Well, probably. <laughs> well, some Let's of it, a most, little of, bit of time. most of what we do is is insurance and then going in and then helping them manage that risk, right. manage their risk as their agent. We do do some consulting where we, we do a fee basis for our consulting work. Um, but that to me is really not the way to do it for a medium sized business. Mm-hmm. You have 20 employees to maybe 500 employees. Uh, your insurance agent should be doing that work. Whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, they should be doing that work to help you manage, to find, to read your leases, to make sure that they're covering you properly, to, to controlling your auto exposure is a big one for me, is every business has that auto exposure, whether it's – even if they don't own any uh, vehicles, you have somebody that's driving for your business, if it's going to the bank or if it's going to the office supply store. you got to manage that. And managing that risk is, is extremely important, and it's not insurance. Yeah. It's somebody to help you and show you this is what you do. You put these in place and you're not going to have maybe as many problems. <laughs> if you do have a problem, at least you got a backup. So what would you say to people who, who are, are um, maybe have experience uh, not getting that claim paid or, or uh, obviously the consulting part of the business is very critical? Um we're gonna when we get back from this next break, we're gonna get, really dig into uh, the uh, the assessment of risk. What mm. what are we talking about here? Um, I know we can talk about a little bit about general liability insurance and what that covers and what that does, but I want to just break it down to what's the if you're a startup, the very right. first thing right. uh, that you should consider is should they go to your company and and get an assessment first. Or just go, like you said, shop. And I mean, what would you say? I would say find somebody that you really trust. Okay. Find somebody you trust that's in that industry. I've worked with the DEC, the Dallas Entrepreneur Center in downtown Dallas for years as a volunteer um, in helping nonprofits and startups. A great organization helping those people that, that they're good at making widgets or doing whatever it is they do, but the business side of it, they need help with. Sure. Whether it's through a CPA or an attorney or an insurance broker or risk manager or whatever. They need that help, and they don't know where to start. And every business, again, like we were talking about, is different. Yeah. Where do you start? You know, yeah, meet with somebody that you trust. Meet with that consultant and ask them where you should start. What should you worry about in the very beginning? 
too many go out and just look for an insurance policy and say, I've got to have it. Give me something. And well, they're all different. So we have a few minutes. So what insurance policy – well, let me just say this because this is this part of the segment that I want you guys to connect with Brian because I went um, – I had someone that I was talking to about – Insperity, mm-hmm. and they said, uh, "Well, I'm thinking about you know I might need a different commercial insurance provider." Uh, so I, I sort of went to my network of, of colleagues and friends and said, "Hey, I don't have a, a commercial insurance provider. Can you can somebody recommend somebody?" And and Brian, your name popped up. It was it was evident that you have a, you know very um, a good reputation in the community, and and so I want to make sure that you know that they understand. The 29 years you've dedicated to your right, business right. has been, like you said, uh, you're volunteering, you're, you're doing assessments. And so that trust factor is a very important piece mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. to um, to a business owner. Uh, what is the trust? So I'm a new business owner. I am going to hire my first employee. I have a small storefront. What's the first thing? To, to be concerned about from a risk standpoint in you in your professional opinion well for them it depends you said open in the storefront so the first thing that's going to come up is their lease mm-hmm. right so many times what they do is they take that piece of that lease that says insurance requirements and they cut and paste that and they send that to somebody and say i need insurance for this but if you don't read that entire lease you're not getting the full picture mm. because, yeah, it says insurance requirements, but that that person in that storefront is signing off on a lot of things that they may not realize they're signing off on. The air conditioner unit on the roof. Many times they're responsible for that AC unit. And it's not going to say an insurance requirement. Be sure and insure the AC unit someplace else in the lease. It's going to say you're responsible for the AC unit. you got to put that in there. There's little things like that that you've got to – that's going to be their first – Insurance issue. Would they go to the insurance agent for that, or would they go to the, an attorney? Would be- no, they'd go. The lease is already written up, right? So it already says that they're responsible for that AC unit. Okay. Uh, they don't even many times that startup. The, your example you just gave, they don't think about it until that something happens to that AC unit mm-hmm. it gets torn up by hail or whatever. Um, they don't think about it until then. I have a personal story about that. I mean, I, I, I leased uh, some storefront property, and I had no idea. It went out in yeah. the middle of summer. Yeah. The, you're absolutely right. It costs thousands, thousands. of dollars um, yes. for me to re- to repair and replace parts. And it was just – it was a nightmare. And I lost business because I couldn't open the doors. So when you said that, it just clicked for me that yeah. – Yeah, what a What a – you know – I wouldn't have obviously I didn't think about it but you know that's right. that's an important part of what you do. But Heidi it's okay for that for that person that's opening that business as long as they know it's not insured in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That to me is the most important thing. They got to know what they got and what they don't got. Yeah. You get to make a decision about well you know what I- I know I might have some cyber risk but I'm going to risk it, right? right? But right. at least know that there's risk. And that's by having somebody like you. And it can be hard for me with those with those new startup businesses to go through that long list of all that stuff, mm-hmm. cyber liability, air conditioning. I mean, you just overwhelm them with the stuff that you've got to do. But it's important because they need to make the decision and they need to know whether they're covered or not or what they need to do on the side. Do they need to renegotiate the lease? Do right. they need to pull that out of there? Right. I usually get the call after they've signed the lease. Mm. So – Call your consultant or your agent before you sign the lease or your attorney yeah. and say, is this okay? What am, I, what am I signing off on that I need to protect myself against? Okay. Well, we're going to go on to our next break. And uh, you're watching DFW Spotlight on Business with Heidi Hardy and Brian Bingham. We're talking about risk in 2018. Oh, my gosh. I can't yeah, believe really. it's already coming so right. fast. Um, and we're talking about what small and medium-sized businesses should consider in in their business as um, um, as they grow as they go into the new year uh, we're going to really get into the details of your recommendations on um, you know what is general liability insurance and and it's just some basics for mm. s- someone that might have more questions yeah. okay so we'll be right back after this next break Welcome to today's Biz Moment, brought to you by Insperity, inspiring business performance. Today's topic, company policies, specifically ones that are more likely to become important in an update of your employee handbook after your company has grown. 
Number one, dress code policy. Employees know exactly what is and isn't acceptable and managers can maintain a consistent approach with staff. However, make sure it's written so that everyone gets treated the same. This is important. And remember that in some cases, religious accommodations may apply. Number two, an employee dating policy. To avoid getting into awkward territory here, a written policy can be helpful for setting boundaries and guidelines, which as we all know, are important in the dating world. When writing the policy, remember that the goal should not be to control employees' personal lives or to inhibit employee interaction, but to avoid misunderstandings, conflicts of interest, complaints of favoritism, negative employee morale, and potential claims of sexual harassment. Number three, a flexible work arrangement policy. Consider what types of job flexibility will be addressed. It could be telecommuting, compressed work weeks, or flex time. Who is or isn't eligible? What is the process for employees to get official approval? <laughs> Number four, a gifts and favors policy. This covers agreements with vendors, customers, and or potential employees. You don't want them to buy their way into the job. What kinds of courtesy gifts and favors are okay to accept and where do you draw those lines? Whatever they may be, make sure you include information that covers the maximum acceptable market value of those gifts as well. Number five, employee complaint resolution policy. With something in writing, you'll make sure that employees have a constructive way to voice their concerns as well as a defense against potential lawsuits or regulatory charges. A good policy would identify key points of contact outline steps employees take prior to filling out a complaint, and explain how these complaints are investigated and handled. Transparency is very important here. Stay tuned for more Insperity Biz Moments, business tips for savvy leaders, and for more like these, you can visit the Insperity blog at insperity.com. Welcome back. This is Heidi Hardy, and you're watching DFW Spotlight on Business. I'm here in the studio with my guest, uh, Brian Bingham. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. We are talking about risk, um, and the topic is called Risky Business, um, assessing your company's risk in t for 2018. Uh, obviously, 2017's you know almost here and gone, and uh, you've probably learned a lot in 2017 uh, mm -hmm. about risk. I was going to ask you this on the break, and I'm going to go ahead and ask it while we're yeah. live on the yeah. air. Um, I have met in many, and in in one probably comes to mind, but many people who just go glassy-eyed and and almost like leave their body when they're talking about insurance. They're just that they just lose interest so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So how you know how do you how do you help? That it, it, people are just either they're not interested or they're interested, but it's overwhelming. Well, you have to, I have to find out what's important to them. Okay. You know, I, I love mean, it. it may not be You're important right. to them at all. Some things, I mean, you know, they may not care. If they don't care, they don't care. Right. Um, but, but I think questioning and asking a lot of questions is important to find out somebody's risk tolerance. What is their tolerance for risk? I have clients that if they have a $50,000 loss, it doesn't matter. They don't care. Uh, I have some that have a $500 loss in it, and it matters. Sure. You have to know that kind of stuff, and you have to insure them the way they want to be insured. But, yeah, it's it's insurance has got a bad rap, right? I mean, there's a lot of insurance agents out there that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so insurance sales has gotten a bad rap over the years in general. I think insurance, um, you either, you know, I don't think anybody, well, you love it when it pays you. <laughs> you love it when it's there for you. Um, but then, you know, I think people just, see it as an, another expense on, on the on that well yeah and that's sad because every business should look at it like a risk management from a risk management perspective right insurance is just one transfer method it's just one way to transfer risk there's so many other things that you can do don't look at it like just going out and buying an insurance policy and expecting it to do everything it doesn't okay get somebody get a get other eyes it doesn't have to be me. It can be anybody that knows what they're doing to come in and, and put another set of eyes on it and say, what am, what kind of other risk do I have? Right. right. What should I protect myself for? How can I change this contract to get rid of that AC unit issue like we were talking about or something else that's in there that's requiring you to pay for the sign out front that you didn't know you were responsible for? Right. That kind of thing. So 
don't know if that answers that question no, it, or not. But it, it absolutely uh, does. And, and what I really just um, grabbed onto was that you ask questions, and um, I, 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 that's important. If you're going to get insurance um, and they're not asking you questions about what's important to you, I think that's a red flag. Absolutely. I yeah. really do. Yeah. So thank you. I think that's a great nugget. Let's talk about some specific risky business. Okay. Um, okay. Well, you, you brought this uh, property. Actually, can you show the picture that you sh that you shared with? And and this is specific to nonprofits. The presentation here, but I think this really. Yeah, it's the old iceberg. Yeah. Thing. What's on top is what you see, and then what's underneath is all of those things, and that's the way your business is. It's just like that. There's some things you see, and those what we were talking about with somebody else looking at it may see some of the stuff under the surface that you don't right that you don't see as a business owner or just have with experience they know you know mm -hmm. they're the expert in it so they, they they're going to dig through that right uh so let's talk about pro property property issues mm -hmm. um um give me i guess just give me your expert advice on property issues well i mean it's easy to come up with you know if you're a business and and the property that you own what property in your business that you do not own you may have somebody else's property in your business Mm -hmm. and you're doing a process to that and you're shipping it out. How is that insured? Does that make sense? So somebody ships you a piece of their equipment and you're adding value to that equipment and then sending it out. Okay. Sometimes that piece of equipment they send you may be worth, you know, hundred grand. In my case, I know several of my clients will have that situation. You've got to be sure that that is insured if you want it insured. Right. So if something Ask happens to your property and while that equipment is there, th that company is going to come after you. Correct. Okay. Okay. Or their insurance company is going to pay for that property and then their insurance company is going to turn around and subrogate against you to get their money back. Mm. And you may or may not have coverage for that. Okay. So okay. Uh, business interruption is huge, right? So again, as long as you know what you're covered for and what you're not covered for. Business interruption coverage will cover you for the time you're down because of a covered loss to keep your employees paid, to stay in business, to keep the doors open long enough to fix the damage from the fire. That money coming in, it's cheap. It's And that's a different policy than your general ability does not cover that. No, correct. That's, that's on a property form. Sure. Right. Okay. So that's something that you just need to be aware of. Um, improvements or betterments to the space. You know, you were, your storefront example a minute ago, when they move in, they spend two weeks renovating the place. Yes. And they spend $100,000 to make it look exactly like they want it to look. Where is that? So when they leave, where is that coverage for that? So when they leave, they've got to put it right back the way they built it. So you build a space out in somebody else's building. It belongs to the building owner. It doesn't belong to you. Mm. But you've got an insurable interest in it. So that's something that that needs to be on these policies if you again if you want it on those policies but those are questions to ask right 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 right, right. If, if, i, I think right. that and, and i like this glass coverage um th that's specific to retail is that specific or is <clears throat> well any business but you know to me that's just not something personally I, I, you don't cover for that unless you've got a lot of really expensive glass okay somebody breaks your window you know, you can you can cover for that if you want to cover for it. it. But it's one of those things that we'll get those calls sometimes and they'll say, oh, I've got a glass claim. Well, you don't have any glass coverage. Okay. Yeah, you know, where is that coverage? You just need to know. As a business owner, you just need to know all of these things and whether you're covered or not. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Let's go on to liability issues. And okay. this one's really interesting to me too also. Um, one thing that we talked about before the show, as we were preparing for the show, is workman's comp insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those business owners out there, Texas is the only state right. in our country that does not require workman's comp insurance. Correct. Tell me from your expert um, opinion of how important workman's comp insurance is. Well, worker's comp protects a business in the best way possible. Okay. There's, there's no better way to protect yourself from employees, something happening to your employees than workers' comp. There is an alternative in Texas, occupational accident insurance. It's a pretty good option for some companies, okay. but it's not a, really a replacement for workers' comp. It's, a, it's something to provide your employees if they hurt themselves, if they come in and they try to sue you for whatever happened. There's coverage in there for that. It's a good option for some businesses. 
because that occupational accident. But workers' comp is absolutely the best. But you get into some businesses, roofers are a great example. Okay, so you you're a consumer and you're having somebody fix your roof. That somebody's on your roof fixing your roof. Somebody you hired, they fall off. Ninety nine percent of the time, they don't have workers' comp. They don't carry workers' comp. It's so expensive. Right. The so roofer roofer may pay. $40 for every $100 worth of payroll mm -hmm. they pay out mm -hmm. would be for workers' comp. I don't know what the rate is right now. I'm just kind of guessing. But um, So <clears throat> let's say that example happens. Okay, so the roofer's fixing your roof at your house. They don't have workers' comp. Falls off the roof. They can come after you as a homeowner. Now, your homeowner's policy will respond to that, but do you really want it to? Sure. <laughs> I it's mean, that could be a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. So answer your question, yeah, workers' comp is extremely important. Okay. But when it comes right down to it, how expensive is it? How much of a burden on the business is it? Every business owner has a different risk tolerance like we were talking about. Sure. So that storefront place that maybe sells flowers or whatever it is that they do, workers' comp is cheap. It is. It's very Extremely affordable. Cheap. And it, so in Sparity, when they take on a client, they take on the workman's comp re responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why PEOs are beneficial because you, you sort of transfer that risk, like you said. Right, right, right. Um, but one of the reasons, and, and I'm amazed at how many companies don't have workman's comp, uh, and a lot of them are these office spaces. At, uh, so we, we just say, you know, people trip over our ficus tree, people smash their finger. I mean, you know, there's a right, lot of right, things that you right. wouldn't think. Right. Would be a dangerous, like roofing, falling off right. a roof. But it doesn't right. really have to be that dramatic. It can mm -hmm. be as, you know, like I said, a sprained ankle mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. So workman's comp is, is an important piece. And, and, and while we're on that, um, one of the value-added things that we do is a process called comp monitor. What comp monitor does is it monitors your worker's comp experience modifier. So without getting into too deep about that, every worker's comp policy in Texas over $5,000 in premium has an experience modifier. Okay. That modifier is kind of based on claims that the insurance company paid and the premiums you paid out. It's a long, complex calculation that they do, but you've got to monitor that. Because that modifier that they put on your policy, and some business owners listening to this may know exactly what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking so about. So yep. it affects your premium. Right. So if that modifier, a 1.0 is average, mm -hmm. a 0.80 is 20% better than average, and a 1.20 is 20% over, obviously. So that's 20% higher premium you're going to pay because of that modifier. And that modifier is based on the claims you pay. So comp monitor monitors that process and checks that modifier to make sure it's correct. And 75% of the time it's wrong. I was just going to say what I know, and, and again, I've been in insurance before when what, and I've looked at workman's comp insurance um, policies. Most of the time they're not categor categorized correctly. Uh, hey, that's another, that is absolutely. So we don't want to put anybody to sleep on the, on the details. on But it is an important <laughs> really important part is is find um, you know call Brian uh, and and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it is so worth the time. And so workman's comp is is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, liability issues, damage mm -hmm. to buildings you occupy but don't own, mm -hmm. um, slip and fall issues. Let's talk a little bit about that because people over dramatize. Uh, you know the, the comedy. S <clears throat> skits oh, it that, happens you know, every day. You know, it happens every day. Yeah. So so. What is liability? And that's that's pretty much what it's intended to do. Um, basically, liability is broken down into two parts, which I would call premises liability and products liability. Premises liability is the slip and falls you're talking about. Okay. Somebody slips and falls and hurts themselves. You go out and damage somebody else's property. That's premises liability. Product liability is your product after it's finished. So whoever made that chair you're sitting in, you fall out of that chair breaks right now and you fall out of it, it because of a defect. That's product liability. And that company has product liability. So two separate pieces of liability. But that business owner that were our example in the storefront, uh, premises and products liability are very inexpensive and part of the policy. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, and then it says get certificates of insurance from all subcontractors. I think this yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Again, I've met with considerable amount of businesses, dozens and dozens, and many of them are still using subcontractors, mm -hmm. uh, even even if they're not in construction. Uh, so mm -hmm. talk to me about that. 
Um, best example is, and this has happened, uh, you know, the roofer example a minute ago where the guy fell off the roof. Sure. So as a consumer, the way you protect yourself is you ask for a certificate of insurance showing that they've got coverage. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing with businesses and what businesses have. They, if you use a subcontractor, you've got to ask for a certificate of insurance no matter what they're doing. Okay. So, so, so that's whether it's you – know, you, you think of a general contractor using subs, but I'm talking more about just a, a business that hires somebody to do something at their property, and it's as simple as an AC unit replacement. Sure. So you've got an AC unit you're replacing on the roof. Get certificates of insurance from that HVAC company to see that they're insured. So when they fall through the roof or they tear something up, they're they're covered. Yeah, I, I would I would completely agree. And everyone who's um, listening, that that's the one of the best pieces of advice it that is. you're going to walk it's, away it's, from. Absolutely, the certificates of insurance. Get those certificates. Not always done. It's hard to do sometimes. Right. It's hard to remember to do. And I understand that. But from our perspective with our clients, we have to constantly remind them, get those certificates. Yep. Yep. Well, great insurance um, companies uh, have no problem. I, I would call ins- you know, an insurance provider and say, hey, I need a copy of that certificate of insurance. Right. And, and so right. uh, uh, choose your insurance provider carefully because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't have to be a problem so we're wow we're running out of time Are we? who would who would know this we'll okay so i'm going to wrap this up although i will say this uh we didn't cover automobile exposure it is one of the most interesting pieces to this risky yeah, business it is. it is and it's, it's huge it is it's huge and and in fact um many of you probably don't know that you have an exposure to this risk um we literally have probably Give me the 30-second on that. We had a client well, – that's a long story probably, but we had a client years ago that, that had an employee that ran over a pedestrian. Oh, no. And so after the fact, they found out that that employee had a DWI on her record. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it, it goes to court. And there's all these problems. We got insurance for it, but – they're letting a – it's negligent entrustment of a vehicle. They're letting someone drive on company business with a DWI. Mm-hmm. How as a business do you protect yourself from that? You know, you, 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 you check their MVR once a year maybe, their motor vehicle report. How do you protect yourself during the course of the year? Extremely important. And there is a way to do that. It is not insurance. It's one of those value-added things that we bring to the table okay. to help our clients with. Got to do it. Okay. So what is the phone number if somebody wants to get a hold of you uh, and the website? 817-385-4471. Okay. And the website is www.alliance-services.com. Okay. At, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to think what the Twitter business agent, at business agent is the Twitter handle. Okay. Do, do yourself a favor. Call Brian. He's, yeah. he's fantastic, and he will take as much time as you need. Um, so thank you for watching DFW Spotlight on Business. I, I, I didn't know we were uh, so far into the, the risky business part, and it's so interesting to me. So hopefully we, we helped you and, and uh, shared some nuggets uh, that you can take with your business. The thought for the week is people who succeed have momentum. The more they succeed, the more they want to succeed, and the more they find a way to succeed. Similarly, when someone is failing, the tendency is to get on a downward spiral that can that can even become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's from Tony Robbins. And I, I love that. Uh, it's a quote from him. But I think to me, it's it's part of, you know, stick to it, be a business, um, you know, get help, get professionals. And thank you for watching DFW Spotlight on Business. We have another show coming up next week and uh, it's going to be about media and marketing. So tune in for that. Uh, Brian. This was lovely. It was. Thank I appreciate you so it. Much. Appreciate you yes. having me. Yes. Yeah. Don't forget to live your real life passionately. This is Heidi, and thanks again.